Hey everyone, I'm Peter Timoney, and today I'm going to show you the tools you'll need to draw characters in Moho Pro 12, formerly known as Anime Studio. Using this program, you can make 2D animations of characters just like me! But first, let's start with the basic tool sets at your disposal. So, this is Moho Pro, and on the screen I have a character that I built. This is Tucker, he's a jackalope. And he is a fully rigged character, which means I am ready to animate him right now if I wanted to. Uh, if you'll notice, inside the drawing are these lines. These are the bones. And the bones can be used and manipulated by dragging them to make him move. Like so. And here he is just bouncing across the screen. But before we ever get to this point, we have to learn how to draw. Drawing in Moho is not like traditional drawing where you use a pen and a pencil and a piece of paper. Drawing in Moho is done with vectors, which means shapes. Tucker here is fully made up of shapes. His cheeks here are a shape. Behind that, his head here is a shape. His mouth, his nose, his ears, his little antlers. These are all different shapes put together to form Tucker as a whole. Um, if I were to go to his head layer, actually, let's go to one of his ears. So this is his front ear. Um, the first tool here is the select points tool, which you can click on to select, or you could just hit G on your keyboard. And this allows me to select these points, which all together create the shape of his ear. Uh, each one of these is a point. Now I can select them individually if I wanted to, or clicking inside the shape selects them all. If I wanted to select just some of the shapes, I could just click on them while hitting shift, and then I have every other shape, or I could select lasso mode up here, and now when I click and drag in lasso mode, I can do that, and then anything inside that is going to be selected. So there you go. Without lasso mode, clicking and dragging creates a box shape that allows you to select multiple points. So, the next tool is the transform points tool. Now, the transform points tool allows you to manipulate the points you have selected. If I click away from them, it unselects them, and I can actually select points using the transform points tool as well. Now, if I just wanted to manipulate just one individual point, I could select it and then I can drag it and you'll see that moving the point actually changes the shape. If I wanted to change the whole thing with everything selected, I could just click and drag to move the shape. Uh, if I wanted to make the shape proportionally bigger or smaller, I can grab these corners and drag them and that keeps the dimensions of the shape but makes it larger or smaller. Um, clicking on here stretches it downward. Clicking inside this outer box area allows me to rotate the shape. Now the next tool is the add points tool which we can use to alter an existing shape like this ear by adding points to it or we can use it to draw new shapes. Uh, if you look up here you'll see auto weld is checked off as well as auto fill, auto stroke, and sharp corners. Now, what this means, auto weld means that when one of my points overlaps another point, they will automatically be welded into one point. So, for example, see, bing, now they're welded and I've created a shape. And it's a nice sharp cornered shape because I have sharp corners checked off. If I had done the same thing without sharp corners checked off, then my corners would be rounded like so auto fill and auto stroke creates the auto fill creates the green inside the shape and auto stroke creates the line around the shape I have it set over here to green for all my shapes which I can always change as if I wanted to later if I wanted to change the curve of these angles I come to my next tool which is the curvature tool or I could just hit C on my keyboard. And this allows me to change 
curves either one at a time or of the whole shape. I'm just going to select just one of these points and I'm going to curve it. So I have everything here rounded. But if I wanted to make this sharper, I just have to click and drag to the left and you'll see it becomes a sharp corner. If I click and drag it to the right, it becomes a wide corner, a round corner. And I can further manipulate and fine tune my curves using these bevels just by moving them like that. I can actually change the angle, pulling it out like so. This really gives you a fine degree of control over the different angles that you have. Now, if I wanted to change all of the points at once, then I've got my uh, peak here, which makes everything sharp, and this makes them rounded again. But if I want to move this back into a square shape, I could just hit that. Alternately, with everything selected, I could just click and drag left and right like that. The next tool is the freehand tool, or you could just hit F on your keyboard. The freehand tool acts like a pen or pencil, lets you draw whatever and worry about the points later. Um, with auto weld and auto close, auto fill, auto stroke, you can use this to hand draw your shapes. Uh, notice how my stroke is... Here, let me just draw a line here so you can see. Oop, I have auto close. Let me undo that. So with auto close off, I just get a line. And see how it's tapered at the beginning and the end? Uh, that's because I have checked off trim start and trim end. But without those, then I get a much more even line. I would be careful when using the freehand tool, though, because it does tend to create many more points than you actually need. There are three points in a row right here, um, which can make it difficult to animate for you later on, although there are ways to reduce the amount of points. I'm just going to get rid of some of these now. Let me just delete some of these shapes. Making some room here. Okay. Okay. So the next one is the draw shape tool and here it creates auto shapes. So I have a rectangle selected, I got circle and I got triangle and I got star. We There's also a arrow which does that and this one here is a nice spiral which does that. What crazy. That creates a grid. You can actually, using these uh, boxes, change your grid. Let's make it 7 by 4. There it is. 7 by 4 grid. Now, once you have your basic shapes, uh, you can use the Add Points tool and the Curvature tool to change them however you want. In fact, Tucker's head here started out as just a basic square, and then I created points like so to make it look more like what I want. And like the curvature tool I can use to round out these uh, sharper corners, these original points, like so. So I can make that look however I want. Um, Right now, this triangle is in front of that circle, but uh, with this tool, which is the Select Shape tool, I can actually move it to the back just by selecting it and hitting the down arrow key. And now it's behind there. All right. Also, one more pro tip. Uh, when you're using the Draw Shape tool, if you hold Shift while you draw, it creates perfect shapes perfectly proportionate shapes like that's a perfect square 
and that's going to be a perfect circle and so on. Um, the next tool is the uh, delete edge tool, which is a D. And let's say I wanted to take that out. I could just click in between those two points and it would take that line out. Uh, if I click right on the points and the lines, it just deletes them. Let's say I wanted to have like a nose shape come out of this side of this circle. So I could delete that edge and then using my add points tool I don't have sharp corners listed so I can stop it there and go to there go there and now I have a nose and I'll clear the board for a moment so this is the blob brush and the blob brush easily creates shapes and right now I have a really small brush, but if I hold uh, Alt or Option key, I can change the size of my brush like that. So now I have a bigger brush. And if I go like that, you'll see that is a pretty unique looking shape right there. And if I keep going, you'll see that I can adjust my shape on the fly like so with the blob brush. Now, if I hit Control on a PC, uh, Command on a Mac, I can actually delete part of the shape like that. So, go like that. So, I can punch a hole in it, like so. So, that's the blob tool. The eraser tool, or E on your keyboard, lets you erase part of an object or punch holes into them, like so. That concludes my tutorial on Moho Pro's basic toolset. Please join me next time and maybe we'll talk about using these tools to design a character. And if you have a moment, please visit my website, TwinComics.com. Thanks.